So, we are going to discuss the influence of combing parameters on combing performance. Let us see what are the different parameters that can affect the performance of the combing process. These can be classified as parameters related to lap or feedstock. There are process parameters, there are parameters related to the machines and setting. Now, what are the important parameters which are clubbed under this category that is feedstock or lap related parameters? These are parallelization of fibers, thickness of lap, evenness of the lap sheet and disposition of fiber hooks in the lap. Let us discuss about the influence of parallelization of fibers. Over parallelization or under parallelization, both are detrimental to the quality of combing. Over parallelization will reduce the retaining power of the uncombed part of the comb or lap during detaching of the comb fringe. See, the combed bar lap itself has some retaining power in terms of retaining the naps which are there and some maybe short fibers as well as trash particles which are there in the lap. That retaining power gets affected by the parallelization of fibers. If the fibers are too parallel, then while these fibers are being detached by the detaching roller, the naps, the very short fibers as well as some trash particles can also be carried forward because the detaining power of the lap has reduced due to over parallelization. As a result of this, as stated, naps and impurities can easily pass through the top comb along with the detaching fibers. One may question that what is the purpose of the top comb here? Though the top comb acts as a filter and it is supposed to stop the entry of the impurities and naps and short fibers into the detached part of the fibers, but still there are the size of these impurities or the size of the naps or the fineness of the fiber, especially short fibers may be much smaller than the gap that exists between the needles of the top comb and therefore, some of them can easily pass through even though the top comb exists. The lap sheet also lacks in strength. This is also very important that when the fibers are too parallel with respect to each other, then the lap sheet itself becomes very, very weak. The adhesion between the fibers will reduce and this may lead to what is known as lap leaking. That is the succeeding layers of the lap will stick to each other while the lap is being unrolled on the combing machine and that leads to lot of you know, unevenness in the comb sliver. Lab leaking we want to avoid at any cost if we want to actually improve the quality of the combing. So, these are the facts with the over parallelization of fibers. Now, if we go to the other extreme that is under parallelizations, where the long fiber loss will be increase due to reduced fiber extent. When the fibers are actually not very parallel, suppose they are folded or they are inclined with respect to the axis of the lap, then their extent gets reduced and as a result, they may behave like a short fibers and they may be a part of the noil. The other thing is increased combing forced 
due to fiber entanglement resulting fiber breakage and plucking of fibers in groups from the lab. That means, if the fibers are highly entangled, they are not parallel with respect to each other, then there is a chance of fiber breakage because combing force is going to increase. Ultimately, the needles of the cylinder is passing through the fringe at a very, very high speed, at a very high velocity and a lot of force is going to act on the fibers and if the force is excessive, obviously the fibers, many fibers may break and if they break, actually we are losing good fibers, long fibers we are breaking and making them short fibers. This is not you know, uh, um, desired from the point of view of quality. The other thing is the plucking of fibers in group from the lab, the force of combing may increase so much that the fibers will be plucked right from the nip of the nippers and hence they may not be really combed properly but a group of fiber may simply slip from the grip of the nippers. This thing also may have and therefore, both over parallelization and under parallelization are detrimental. So, we have to and how do we parallelize the fiber? The only means to parallelize the fibers in the lab sheet is by the draft that we apply to the sliver when we convert the slivers, cut slivers into comber lab. So, how much draft do we give that determines the level of parallelization of fibers in the comber lab. So, we have to decide that what is the right value of draft that we should keep for transforming the carded sliver into a comber lab. Let us go to the next slide now. Influence of lab thickness. This is another parameter. What should be the right value of lab thickness. Let us try to understand naps, trash and short fibers retaining power increases with lab linear density. That is as the lab becomes thicker that you have more fibers in the cross section of the lab, then the retaining power of the lab will increase. And when the retaining power of the lab increases, actually the cleaning action in terms of removal of trash particles or nap removal efficiency both actually improves if the retaining power of the lab sheet is improved and hence since it also depends on the thickness of the lab there is a minimum thickness that we require uh, in order to have a sufficient retaining power of the lab. The other thing is the grip of the nipper also improves with thickness up to a certain level. That is the gripping power of the two nippers which is gripping the sheet of lab, that gripping power will also improve to a certain extent or to a certain level as the thickness improves because the, the spring which is actually helping in gripping the fibers they will be compressed more. So, the therefore, some amount, some minimum amount of thickness is always required. However, if the lap is made too thick, then it increases the load on the combed needles leading to plucking. Basically, the force, the combing force is going to increase because the needles will now pass through large number of fibers and therefore, the needles have to overcome more resistance to actually comb the fibers and therefore, the force will increase and when the force is very high, there is a chance of plucking of tuft of fibers from the grip of the nippers. The other thing is fiber breakage as well, that is when the force is very high, there is a chance of fiber breakage. The other point is fibers in the top layer of the lab may escape combing actions 
by the slender needles. That is, if we see the distance or the setting between the, the cylinder needles and the lab sheet, the needles are penetrating the sheet from the bottom part of the fringe. And therefore, if the sheet is too thick, only the bottom part up to a certain depth will be combed by the needles of the cylinder. The top part of the fringe may not be exposed to the action of the needles of the cylinder and hence they may escape combing action. Therefore, neither too thin lap is good nor too th thick lap is good. Keeping in mind the, the design aspect of the gripping power of the nippers and the height and inclination angle of the needles of the cylinder, the lab linear density is restricted to 55 to 75 kilotex in the comb bar. So, this is the range in which the comb bar lap are made. We do not make too thick a lap or too high value of lab linear density, neither too thin and the range is between 55 to 75. So, lab linear density is actually directly connected to the thickness. If the linear density increases, thickness is going to increase. They are directly related. From there, we move on to the next slide. That is the uniformity of the lab. This is also another important point. How uniform the lab is. Evenness of the lab sheet across its width ensure better clamping and nipping. So, whenever we talk about you know, uniformity of a sheet, uniformity, there are two aspects of this uniformity. One is the uniformity along the length. The other one is the uniformity across, that is along the width. Now, doubling of the wave in sandwich form can only ensure better uniformity of the lap sheet, which is the, this uniformity we are talking about it is, it is the uniformity across the width, not along the width. Whereas, sliver doubling does not help. Sliver doubling, if we add more and more sliver, it will only improve the uniformity of the lap sheet along its length, but not across the width. What matters here is is the doubling possibility of the waves in sandwich form. And this is only possible on ribbon lab machines, because the ribbon lab machines we have already you know, discussed about the sliver lab and ribbon lab machines. And if you recall that in the ribbon lab machines, the waves which are coming from six different heads or eight different heads, whatever they are, these waves are actually placed one on the top of the other. And Therefore, they are all are in sandwich fashion, they are actually combined and then they are rolled into a sheet and we call it a lap. So, in the ribbon lab machine, we can actually go for wave doubling and that wave doubling process will, will improve the uniformity of the sheet across the width. These diagrams on the right hand side is trying to explain that in the first case, this is a very uniform lab sheet from the left hand side to the right hand side. This kind, this is the most ideal one. The next one shows little waviness, that means somewhere it is thick, somewhere it is thin across the width. This thing is not good. This kind of variation of lab thickness that is at the two edges, it is little thicker, but at the middle, it is little, it is still ok. So, this is also another kind of thickness variation of the sheet across the width. So, this is also not good. Third one, the second one also is not good. What we always aim for is the very first diagram that is shown here. This is the ideal one, otherwise we will have no 
problems with the quality of the combing. The other thing this is related to the feedstock or the lap sheet in this case is disposition of fiber hooks. We all know that unfortunately the carding machine generates lot of hook fibers that we cannot help the way the machine has been designed there are thousands of pins on the surface of the cylinder and doffered and all these pins are carrying the fibers they are catching the fibers at the forward end and moving them forward. So, as a result of this many many fibers are bent in the form of hook and they are delivered from the doffer surface in hook form and they move forward. So, therefore, we find that in the card sliver there are lots of fiber whose configuration is like a hook either in the one end either in the leading end or in the trailing end or sometimes we can see that both the ends are also hooked this is also possible. So, we have both end hook type of fibers, we can have one end hook type of fiber, on the top of it fibers may be inclined, fibers may be highly entangled, all sort of configurations are possible and these things are there. If we have discussed them, uh, if we look at the textbook on carding, you will find that the type of hooked fibers which are there and the percentage. Now, when we have leading hook fiber that is what should predominate that we should prefer in the lab as they get an opportunity to be straightened out by the teeth of the cylinder comb during combing. So, if the hook fibers are there in the lab sheet then we will prefer that these fibers are presented in the leading directions. In that case what will happen whenever the needles will pass through these hooked ends as shown in the diagram there is a chance that these hooked ends will get straightened out and therefore, the fibers will be fully extended and hence the fiber extent is going to increase and as the fiber extent is going to increase there is a possibility that these fiber ends will be able to reach the detaching roller nip and hence they will be detached. So, even though they were shorter because they were folded, but since they get an opportunity to be straightened out by the needles of the cylinder comb, they can reach the nip of the detaching roller and they can be part of the sliver instead of becoming a part of west. The west that we extract this is a little we will have discussion about the west. The west is also known as noil more technical term in the case of comber is noil. So, noil and west basically mean same. So, the waste that we extract, we extract or we want to extract basically the short fibers because we know that the short fibers are actually detrimental to the quality of the yarn therefore, we want to get rid of them and hence the combing machine has been designed. Now, in the noil there are long fibers also can be seen. The waste may be due to long fiber loss as stated here and because of their breakage also possible. See in this diagram you see the waste consists of long fiber loss, consists of short fiber removal and consists of long fiber breakage that is broken long fibers loss due to short fiber removal that is this is the part which we want to maximize always because we want all the short fibers to be removed. 
But what happens besides them? Some long fibers get broken and part of the long fiber becomes, it moves out as noil. So unnecessarily we are losing some long fibers. At the same time, sometimes the long fibers, if they remain too much folded, they behave like short fibers and they are also extracted as noil. And hence, we can say that the loss of long fibers or breakage of long fibers, we need to avoid as much as possible. Whereas we want to see that uh, my noil or my waste only consists of short fibers. That is what is idle. But unfortunately, this does not happen. Factor responsible for this waste extraction are fiber disorder, which in turn depends upon the pre-combing draft. As I have discussed earlier, that pre-combing draft decides the level of you know, orientation and parallelization of the fibers in the lab sheet. The other thing is number of majority hooks fed in the feeding directions. Now what is majority hooks? Majority hooks are the hooks which are more in number in cart sliver. In the cart sliver, if we look at and study the cart sliver and see the configuration of fibers in a cart sliver, then you will see that in one direction there are more fibers which are folded and the other directions the folded fibers are less in number. So with respect to carding machines, the folded fibers in telling directions are more in number. We call them telling hook and we can also call them at majority hooks. The fibers which are folded in the forward directions, they are basically known as, more commonly known as leading hooks and we can say they are the minority hooks. So when we talk about majority hooks and minority hooks, this will be always with reference to their presence in cart sliver. The other thing which are responsible is detachment setting. These three factors are responsible for waste. Now why are you emphasizing, emphasizing on waste? Because raw material is very costly. We have to remember that the, in the cost of yarn, 60 percent of the cost is due to raw material and therefore the profitability of the process very much depends on saving raw material because contribution of raw material to the overall cost of the yarn is maximum. Hence, we have to always you know, give more attention to the loss part and because out of the, all the processes, if you see the broadroom or opening cleaning process, the carding process, drawing process and the other processes, combing process or whichever we have, the maximum amount of waste we generate in combing machines. And therefore, we have to give you know, more emphasis to the waste generation in combing. All right. Now trailing and leading hooks with respect to cart delivery are termed as majority and minority hooks as I just stated. Trailing hooks fibers with respect to cart delivery directions are majority hooks. They are more in number than the leading hooks fibers in cart sliver. Okay. Go to the next slide now. Now this slide shows the way the waste percentage changes with detachment setting for two different directions of feed. That is trailing direction of feed and leading direction of feed. So this is trailing direction of feed of what? Trailing direction of feed of the majority hooks and leading direction of feed means leading direction of feed of also majority hooks. Generally, the way we you know, design the pre-combing process 
that we give two passages, we call it even number of passages. The purpose of giving two passages, I think we have already discussed earlier, is to make sure that the majority hooks are presented in the leading direction, while combing process will be carried out on them. That is the purpose why we need minimum two passages between card and combing. The reason is that we have to make sure that the majority hooks are presented in leading direction because their numbers are more, so they will get an opportunity to be straightened out. Okay. Now, look at this diagram and see what are the observations that we can have. Waste percentage increases with increasing detachment distance irrespective of direction of feed. If you see both the you know, lines, then you can see green line and the blue line, we will see basically the waste is increasing with detachment setting. More is the setting means more is the gap between the detaching roller and the nipper. The nippers are continuously oscillating. So, when the nippers come to their closest position with respect to detaching roller nip, then the distance that exists between them that is called detachment setting. So, this setting if we keep increasing, waste is going to increase. So, how much waste do we need? Accordingly, we have to maintain a particular setting. The effect of direction of feed depends upon the detachment distance or detachment setting, whatever you see. The effect also depends on the setting. That is, if you look at this vertical line at the point A, now on the right hand side of A, the picture that we see is different than on the left hand side of A. That is on the right hand side, the blue line is above the green line. On the left hand side, the green line is above the blue line. This is the difference. At the point A, they are intersecting. Now, this is one important observation. At narrow setting, the waste is more when majority hooks are fed in leading directions in comparison to trailing direction of feed. So, that means basically that is why the what is basically stating that the green line indicates this that the narrow setting that is on the left hand side of A, the waste percentage is more when majority hooks are fed in leading direction and the difference in waste increases with narrowing down the setting. That is you see this difference here and here, here it is gradually increasing as the setting is reduced. If we go to the other side, you will get just opposite picture. The difference here keeps increasing as we increase the setting. That means the picture is totally different on the right hand side and left hand side of A. At wide setting, the waste is more when majority hooks are fed in trailing direction as we see it here. Here the waste is always more than when they are fed in leading directions. And the difference in waste decreases with narrow drying the setting. That means here this is the decrease. We can say the difference is decreasing as we setting is decreased this side. Direction of feed affects the number of hook fibers presented in leading or trailing direction during combing. This statement is important because how many fibers with hook tents are fed in the leading direction or trailing direction all depends upon the direction of feed. Now, try to understand what happens. First of all, comb fringe characteristics. What happens when combing is going on? Comb fringe protruding from the nipper will be longer when majority hooks are fed in leading directions. So, this is the fringe length before combing and this is the fringe length after combing. So, when the majority hooks are fed in leading direction, look at the fringe length, it extends from here to there, it goes from here to there. 
as shown here. And in the previous case, if I take the same lap sheet and feed in the opposite direction now, then the majority hooks will be fed in the trailing direction and minority hooks will be in the leading direction now. In that case, the fringe length will be little shorter. What is the result of this? What is the consequence of this? A result of this and why does it happen? It happens because most of the majority hooks are longer in comparison to the minority hooks. And therefore, when they are in the leading direction, if I comb it, they get straightened out and therefore, their comb fringe length as a result increases. Now, if this is the situation as shown in the diagram, the number of fibers caught by the data check roller will also be larger when the majority hooks are fed in leading direction because it will extend from here to there and therefore, more and more fibers will be able to reach the nip of the detaching roller and therefore, they will be drawn and hence they become a part of comb sliver. So, the difference in fibers grip for a given lab fed in two directions will be greater at higher detachment settings. At such distances, the effect of straightening the leading hooks will be felt most. So, the influence of this direction of feed will be felt most when the detachment setting is more. If the detachment setting is less, the effect will be felt less because even if the fibers you know, uh, are straightened out or not straightened out, it does not matter because even then their extent is sufficiently long enough to reach the detaching roller because the setting is very narrow. So, even if they do not get extended, it does not matter in that case. So, the influence will be felt more when the detachment setting or detachment distance is actually more. The short you know, setting, the effect may not be felt much. Now, when the hook ends are fed in the leading direction, there are two possibilities as also we have stated this that one is the, let us say this is the hook and being fed in leading direction, it may get straightened out and this, this extent becomes quite long now. The fiber extent increases. The other th possibility is that, that when the pin passes through the hook tent, the action may be so vigorous that the, at the tip of the hook it breaks and therefore, we get two pieces. One base and the other the hook part. So, I have now two pieces the base and the hook. The hook part is shorter and the base is little longer. So, that means one fiber becomes now two fibers. The hook part being short, there is every possibility that the hook part may end as a part of west because being too short, it may not be able to reach the detaching roller nip and it may be extracted as west. So, therefore, even though the fiber was long, because the fiber broke into two pieces and hence the hook part becomes a part of west and west therefore increase. But the base being long enough may be able to reach the detaching roller nip and it becomes a part of the comb sliver. So, these are the possibilities that and uh, how many of really break, how many gets run out that we cannot know anticipate in advance. So, hooks fed in leading directions, let us think about this and the setting is narrow, all bases and some broken hook ends may reach this liver. When the setting is narrow, then bases be, anyway they are still long, they will be able to reach or they will be able to uh, know, cover the gap that exists between the nipper and the detaching roller. And the hook tend even though it is short, still some of them may be able to reach because the setting is low. So, all bases and therefore, some broken hook ends, we are not saying all broken hook ends, some of them may be able to reach and be becomes a part of sliver. The proportion of hooked fiber getting straightened out and reaching the detaching roller nip is more in this case. Those which will get straightened out, anyway they will be long and therefore, they will be part of the 
foam sliver and this reduces the waste percentage and the effect of breakage may not be felt much if the setting is low. If the setting is wide, the straighten out ends and the bases of broken hook fibers only will reach the detaching roller and the waste will be less. When the setting is wide, like in the previous case if you see, the straighten out ends and some bases will only reach, but the broken ends will not be able to reach. In this case, the wide setting, most of the broken ends will not be able to reach, but in the narrow setting, some broken ends will be able to reach. This is the only difference that it will make between narrow setting and wide setting when I am feeding the hooked fibers in the leading directions. If the same fiber is present in the tilling direction, then this is the diagram that is shown here. Now, if you look at this diagram, in this case, the fiber is not going to break. So, the, the two limbs are there, it is gripped somewhere here. So, this side is gripped here while combing, the needles will pass through and there is no chance of the fibers to break. And now, but there is no change in the extent of the fiber also. The fiber extent is not going to change, is not going to increase because there is no straightening, straightening out action. So, the fate of the fiber depends upon, in this case, the fate of this particular fiber depends upon the detachment setting. Now, the fibers which was, in this case, which is folded, it will move through the combing zone in folded state and now all depends whether the extent of this fiber in folded state, whether it can breach the gap between the nipper and the detaching roller or not. That question will decide the fate of this, the answer to that question will actually decide the fate of this fiber. Now, the setting is narrow, waste is expected to be less when the majority of hooks are presented in tailing directions that is in this case, because the extent is long enough to reach the detaching roller nip. Though so the setting is low, there was no scope for this trailing hook to be straightened out, but even it does not matter, because even with foot configuration, it is long enough to breach the gap, because the setting is narrow. And hence, in this case, the west will be much, much less. <coughs> it will be able to reach the lab and it will be part of the uh, your um, comber lab and therefore, more and more fibers become part of comb lab. So, less and less fiber will be part of waste and so the waste will be less. But why the waste will be more in the case of leading direction feed? Because if we feed in leading direction the same hook, the hook might break and one part has a chance, the broken limb part, the hook part has a chance to be part of the waist. So, therefore, if the same hook fiber is present in leading direction now, in narrow setting, if we think this part, this hook part may not be able to reach the nape. Some of them, may, many of them will reach, but some of them may not be able to reach and therefore, they become part of west and therefore, the west will be more when you see the green line is indicates that, that they are being fed in the leading direction. So, west may be more and if we go to the wider setting, the same hook fiber, fiber whether broken or not will be extracted as west. Since the extent is not likely to change after combing and breeze the detaching distance, thus it will fail to be detached that is, is the setting is wide about this fiber as this trailing hook fiber. When the setting is very wide, there is no change in its extent and therefore, many of them now will not be able to reach the detaching roller nip and hence, trailing direction of feed will keep on increasing the west when the setting is wider this part is the wider part of the setting. So, you see that the 
first extraction picture actually changes and all depends upon the, the detachment setting and the direction of feed. Whatever we have stated here is now presented in a very comprehensive manner in this particular diagram. This diagram actually is capturing the essence of whatever we have discussed till now that is hook fiber feeding direction, hooks leading, hook trailing, hooks leading there are two part one is west the other is comb sliver. The comb sliver narrow setting what will happen all bases plus some broken hook fiber will be part of it wide setting most of the bases will be part of it. In the west if you think then most broken hook ends will land up in the west in this case, but in wide setting all broken ends and some bases will be part of the west. The same way the way we are, you know, we are picturizing the thing on the left hand side we can see it on the right hand side also when the same hook is trailing part of it. So, the fiber part of it is becoming comb sliver or west narrow setting what is going to happen and wide setting what is going to happen these things are stated here. So, this in the tabular form or in the form of block diagram the entire essence is uh, has been captured and you can relate it and try to remember what happens when the hooks are fed in leading directions. So, what are the possibilities and from here we can easily make out that why in one case the west is more and in the other case the west is less. Let us go to next point that is influence of process parameters. Here there are two parameters we are discussing one is lab feed per cycle and other one is type of feed. Lab feed per cycle that is how much lap length is fed per cycle that is per revolution of the cylinder. Now, feed length affects sliver quality, production and noil level. Three aspects are affected quality of the sliver, the production and the noil. These three important you know, what should I say the three important parameters of the machine are affected by the length of feed. High feed per cycle increases production, but causes deterioration in cleanliness of the yarn. Low feed per cycle will be just opposite, it will improve quality of combing since the same fiber will get combed many times while crossing the combing zone, but production will be less. So, the influence can be you know, explained on the basis of boundary length which we have discussed earlier. The boundary length is E plus F by 2 or E minus F by 2 or E is indicating the detachment setting and F is indicating the feed per cycle. Feed is the feed of the lap. Now, you see if the boundary length increases what is going to mean basically means we will have more waste. So, if E value increases irrespective of type of feed the waste is going to always increase. If I increase E here or there in both the cases the boundary length is going to increase and therefore, if you remember the concept of boundary length then it will be easy to understand that the waste is going to increase, but the influence of feed is going to be different because the boundary length in one case is going to increase in the other case is going to decrease. These boundary length values depends upon the type of feed that is whether it is a forward feed machine or whether it is a backward feed machine. Now, this diagram 
gives you an idea that the fringe length at different stages of the combing process. The fringe length is indicated by this orange line and the blue line that you see here is blue line is part of the lap is also shown. Now, let us say stages of combing, after combing forward feed, backward feed, the length of the fringe is always E, where E is the detachment setting. So, just after combing and detachment is over, the fringe which is left will be of length E, where E indicates the detachment setting. During combing process, what will happen? Now, the actually this diagram you have to it is it is moved up a little bit we have to think that they should be brought down so during combing for forward feed length of fringe will remain this no change but for backward feed the length of fringe will be e plus f because in the backward feed machine before the combing starts we actually feed a part of the lab so, the blue line indicates the feed of the lap sheet. Now, while combing is going on the backward feed machine, we are actually combing a fringe of length E plus F. After combing, but before detachment, the length of the fringe forward feed is E plus F because before de detachment starts, in the case of forward feed, we now feed the lap. You have to remember the sequence and therefore, the sheet the fringe length become E plus F out of this E remains uncombed whereas, in the case of backward feed the length is still E plus F, but the F part here basically this is the F part. In this case the F part has already been combed in the case of backward feed. After detachment, then we are detaching the fringe and after detachment is over, the length of fringe will again be E and E. And this is this picturization of the process will also help us to understand that why in one case I will get a better you know, combing quality or I will get a better production than in the other case. So, if I go to the type of feed, forward feed is chosen for high production rate when demand on quality is not rigorous. See, it has been shown here that this detachment distance, noil percentage, backward feed, and forward feed, two types of feeding machines. Now, forward feed is chosen when we need high production rate, but the quality is going to be whenever forward feed means what that I am feeding see if we look back forward feed is in this case. In this case what we are doing I am feeding I am combing a length of fringe which is E, but then when detachment is going about to start I am pushing an uncombed part of the lap which is F and therefore, the more fibers are pushed forward to be gripped by the detaching roller and they become part of the cone material. Therefore, production will increase, but noil will be less, waste will be less. Whereas, in the case of backward feed, the entire E plus F was combed by the cylinder needles. So, we have removed the short fibers even from the part F and hence this time because the backward feed will be able to extract more waste and that is why what we see here that in the case of backward feed will always extract more and more waste irrespective of detachment distance or setting. Any detachment distance or setting will always extract more waste in the case of backward feed than in the case of forward feed. Noil extraction is generally in the range of 5 to 12 percent and uh, in the case of forward feed 
backward feed in oil extraction is 12 to 25 percent. So, backward feed will be able to extract more waste. So, when we need more waste to be extracted, we go for backward feed. And if you look at the boundary length, those if you remember this backward feed boundary length value is going to increase because F is going to be more if we increase more feed or for a given value of E and F boundary length is less in the case of forward feed and hence waste will be less. That way also we can try to understand. For the given value of E and F in this case boundary length is less, in this case boundary length is going to be more. So, more boundary length means more waste, less boundary length means less waste. So, less waste means also automatically means more production or more waste means less production. Now, let us go to the next no, parameter which affects is this is influence of the settings which are there in the machine. So, there are three types that we are going to discuss detachment setting or detaching setting, depth of penetration of the top comb, there is another setting, the other thing is piecing index setting. Detachment setting, this anyway we have already discussed the that as the setting increases or as the detachment distance increases, noyal extraction is going to be more and more and the production is going to be less and less. Setting beyond optimum does not improve quality except imperfections. This is also we have to remember. Detachment setting lies in between 15 to 25 millimeter. That is the typical setting we maintain. If noyal percentage varies while machine settings are constant, the cause is due to variability in the raw material. And these variabilities basically mean that short fiber percentage in the raw material. That keeping machine setting same and noyal percentage keeps varying basically means that there is a you know, variability in the percentage of short fibers in the sliver or in the cotton and therefore, these variations can be seen. And we can also explain this in terms of boundary length because setting is basically value of E. So, more E boundary length is going to increase and therefore, that is going to be more and more noyal. Depth of penetration of top comb, lowering the top comb by about 0.5 mm increases noyal by 2 percent. This is an experimentally observed that uh, top comb penetration can also influence the noyal percentage. The main improvement is in eliminating of NEPs. However, too much penetration causes disturbance in fiber movement during piecing leading to deterioration in quality. We will discuss, I think I have already discussed or maybe we will be discussing now that is that the detaching zone is basically is also a drafting zone. Because I am feeding the fringe at a certain velocity and I am withdrawing, gripping the fibers forward end and pulling them out at another velocity. So, when there is a velocity difference between feeding and withdrawal, that means there is a draft. So, detachment process is a drafting process in a way. So, in a drafting process as we have already discussed while discussing drafting on draw frame, there is a chance of development of irregularity because of uncontrolled movement of the short fibers. And if you remember that in order to control the movement of short fibers in a drafting zone, we use pressure bar. Top comb also acts like a pressure bar. It acts as a frictional restraint and therefore, if a press is too much, the restraint becomes so high that it may cause disturbance to the movement of fiber and therefore, it may deteriorate the quality of the yarn. This is what 
is all about the top comb. It is a filtering media, it is filtering, it is not allowing the short fibers, the trash particle naps to pass through, most of them are arrested and accumulate behind the top comb, that is one purpose. The other purpose is, it also acts as a frictional restraint and therefore helps in improving the quality of the you know, drafting process which happens because of the detachment. Piecing index setting, next comes piecing index, the piecing of successive comb fringes causes periodic variation which is between 30 to 75 centimeter and which are visible in a spectrogram. If we take a sliver from the combing machine and uh, go for is, uh, no, is uh, take it to the Worcester Worcester Ribbonness Tester and we can find out the periodic variation in it by studying the spectrogram of the sliver. And you will find that there are periodic variation at interval of 30 to 75 centimeter. By proper setting, it is possible to lay the fringes on each other such that unevenness in successive fringes cancel each other. This periodic variation is because of piecing of successive fringes, comb fringes. See one, the comb fringes are generated one after the other and there is an overlapping process. The overlap zone is a source of thicker region, thick region and therefore, we can have thick region at regular interval. That is what is piecing wave. Piecing this through setting, it is possible to lay the fringe. It all depends how the fringes are laid one on the top of the other. If there is a, you know, wrongly they are placed one on the top of the other, then the uh, intensity of the wave is going to increase. And that intensity to some extent can be regulated or controlled by the piecing index. Correct superposition is influenced by the time of beginning of the detachment relative to the replacement of the comb fringe to the nape of the detaching roller that is achieved by piecing index setting. This is what is the purpose of piecing index. The other machine parameters are now coming, we are coming to piecing parameters which are type of needle on the cylinder comb and the needle density. So, cylinder comb have lot of you know, short tooth type of teeth on it. So, that also have influence. Here the you see on the right hand side a cross-sectional view as if of the half lap of the cylinder. You can see the, you know, the needles which are projecting out. Short tooth clothing being robust is generally used because they are very strong and hence uh, they are mostly used on the half lap. Short tooth needles, short tooth needs less maintenance and universally applicable. Tooth density, if we look at this diagram, we will find the tooth density is gradually increasing as you go to Todi from, if we go this way from right to left, what we see that the density is gradually increasing. Front row teeth are larger, you look at these teeth, they are larger. Why they are larger? Because it helps to grab the lap sheet and bring it downwards for effective penetration by subsequent rows of needles. Initially, there is a wide gap between the succeeding no, teeth because we have to grab the fringe first and then the fringe is pulled down and once they are pulled down, now the rest of the needles can easily pass through it. And if we see the pattern of tooth density on the surface of the half lap, then we see here that there are four, four partitions, partition 1, S1, S2, S3, S4 or four sectors we can say. In the S1 sector, 
the number of rows are around 3, the arc length is 10 mm and the gap between the rows is around 5 mm, wire point density is around 34 points, 34 needles per inch. This is maybe the first row here, the second, third and the rows goes on one after the other. So, there are three rows here and in each row there are 34 needles per inch. Then you go to the second partition or second sector that is consist of five rows and the needle density or oil point density is 40. There is S1 to S2, S2 to we go to S3, this is third partition, number of rows are 10 and oil point density is 44. And then comes the fourth partition where the rows are 26 and the density is 52. So, we see that the first three rows, then another five rows which are similar in nature, then another ten rows, all these ten rows are similar in nature, then next twenty six rows are there, they are also similar in nature. Total forty four rows of needles are there, that is how this sector has been designed and needles have been designed and as I said that initially the needles are much wider, they are widely spaced because they are supposed to grab the sheet and then bring it down and also to reduce the force on the fibers. If it is too dense at the beginning, there is a chance that it may not be able to catch the fringe at very high speed. It will behave like a continuum surface and the fringe may bump from the surface of the half lap needles. If there are too many needles, we keep at the very first or second row. So, therefore, here the number of uh, the needle, needle density, that is number of needles per in a given row is much less. Another diagram of the same thing is shown here and if we plot needles per inch versus rows we see this diagram. From first to third same density, then there is a step jump, then again they are same, again there is a jump, again they are same, again there is a jump and then again they are all same. So, this is how the a typical you know, needle density in, uh, in different rows are shown here. Now, these are the needles or short tooth on the cylinder or half lap. Now, we have also needles on the top comb. Top comb point density and fineness should be according to the raw material. This is only one row of needles are there in the top comb. The needles have flattened cross section and are formed with a bend. This thing we have discussed in some previous lecture. Point density is around 22 to 32 needles per centimeter or you can say 58 to 81 needles per inch and more needles actually will give more resistance to to the movement of fibers through them it will arrest more number of naps or more short fibers, but at the same time it will also increase the force with which when the fibers are actually detached. So, there is a therefore a limit to the number of needles that we can go. If we try to process very fine fibers, we will go for finer needles or more number of needles per inch if when you are processing medium uh, fine fibers, then we will go around 60, 58 that means close to 60 needles per inch. So, depending upon the fineness we choose, choose the, the needle density on the top comb and with that we complete the influence of process parameters on combing process, combing quality or combing efficiency whatever we say.
थैंक यू